Hey everyone, so I have a book review for you today and this is a Harry Potter book. This is the Science of Harry Potter. Um, now I will point out there that it says not improved or endorsed, I think it says in the mirror. Yes, endorsed by J.K. Rowling or Warner Brothers. So this is not a official Harry Potter book, it's written by Roger Highfield. And what this basically is, is it looks at the science behind Harry Potter. Um, really pretty image as well, the broom. And it looks at all the magical things that are in Harry Potter and works out whether they would be possible in the real world. For example, I'll just turn to a page. Um, don't know. It's got like quotes from Albert Einstein and things, so it's quite educational. Um, let me find a page that's suitable. It's typical. You know what? It's always typical. I try to find something in a video and it just doesn't work. Um, owl snails and scroots, and it looks at them and how they'd adapt in the real world and whether they'd actually fit in and. It talks about the brooms and how broomstick flying could actually be possible in this world and how people have tried it for years and people are still trying to do it. And um, how Hermione's time time turner and it talks about travelling in time. And actually something I want to mention here. So this is a sort of goes against everything Doctor Who goes on about. Um when they went back in time, it obviously it's important that you can't change anything in the past, but one scientist I don't know what scientist said it, because I can't remember the name, because there's loads of science names in here, said that when we go back in time theoretically, you don't go back in time, you go back in time to a parallel world. So it's like, when we're in the Earth, a parallel world that has the exact same events happens, so we can go back in time to the parallel world, and then if we change events it doesn't necessarily like, change things dramatically in our real world. Um, it's kind of hard to get your head around, but I like the theory that we go to a parallel world when we go back in time. Um, it just makes things a little bit more safe and a little bit less scary that we go back and change things. But it looks at all the different things in Harry Potter and how, like, Miranda's map could could work by using electronic paper. That could really happen. Um, you could use tagging to track the, the um, places of where people are. Um, so obviously, like, coppers use tagging things to track criminals when they've got, like, to stay within boundaries and things. So it's not impossible. Um, and I think that is really exciting because it makes, makes the magic world feel just a little bit more exciting. You guys know that I'm a huge believer in magic and Wiccan and everything, or I think you do. Um, well, for me, this is like a sort of a Bible guide. I really do love it. There are a lot of scientific words in here, a lot of jargon. Um, it does take a little bit of getting used to if you're not scientifically minded. I'm not completely scientifically minded. Um, it may take you a little while to adapt to the language and the lingo and the style. But after the first chapter of that, you really get sucked in and you really start to understand it because they use the same term terminology every now and then. So the same words come up and it's really educational as well. So it is definitely for a Harry Potter fan. It does not for a young Harry, po po Harry Potter fan, Harry Potter fan, unless they're like, their IQ is greater than their average for their age, you know, it's not for a young child. But for the older Harry Potter fan or the more intelligent young Harry Potter fan, there's a three year old with an IQ that's like twice the normal average adult mental. But yes, um, definitely great for any Harry Potter fan who will be able to understand it. Even if you don't think you'll understand, give it a go, you might surprise yourself because a lot of the Harry Potter terminology is intertwined and the examples back up each other. So if you understand the Harry Potter terminology, it'll help you relate to the science words and it makes... It's a lot easier to understand than you think it would be if you've never studied science or you don't like science. Um, but you have to sort of have some kind of liking to, towards science, otherwise it'll be kind of a drone fest. But yeah, it is really good. I got mine from Oxfam for 79 pence. Um, but it'll be a couple of quid. I've never actually seen this in bookstores, but Amazon have it, eBay probably will have it. It won't be that hard to get hold of online. But please feel free to leave comments and things and let me know your thoughts on this or anything else to do with Harry Potter. And let me know if you've read this fantastic book. Kudos to the author, as I said, Roger Highfield, for writing this. Absolutely brilliant. It's kind of long. It's 370 pages, but um, no, not as long as some of the Harry Potter books, granted. Um, yeah, but please feel free to leave comments and things and let me know your thoughts and also your thoughts on any of the Harry Potter magic things which you think could be real. Um, yeah, but please feel free to leave comments and I will see you next time. Bye guys!